So our lecture for today's chapter is about protein biophysics and its structure. So first, let us define what is a protein. A protein is a naturally occurring, extremely complex substance that consists of amino acid residues joined by peptide bonds. Proteins are present in all living organisms and include many essential biological compounds such as enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. So, first let us define protein folding. Protein folding occurs in a cellular compartment called the endoplasmic reticulum. This is a vital cellular process because proteins must be correctly folded into specific three-dimensional shapes in order to function correctly. Unfolded or misfolded proteins contribute to the pathology of many diseases. So what are the four stages of protein folding? There are four stages of protein folding that includes primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The first structure, which is the primary structure, is the sequence of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. Primary structure of a protein is determined by the gene corresponding to the protein. Okay, what is a peptide bond? A peptide bond, also sometimes called eupeptide bond, is a chemical bond that is formed by joining the carboxyl group of one amino acid to the amino group of another. A peptide bond is basically an amide type of covalent chemical bond. This bond links to consecutive alpha amino acids from C1, carbon number 1, of one alpha amino acid and nitrogen number 2, of another. This linkage is found along a peptide or protein chain. During the formation of this bond, there is a release of water molecule. A peptide bond is usually a covalent bond, and since the water molecule is eliminated, it is considered as a dehydration process. Generally, this process occurs mostly between amino groups. Meanwhile, a peptide is a Greek word that means digested, a peptide is a short polymer of amino acid monomers linked by amide bond. Peptide bond formation or synthesis. A peptide bond is formed by a dehydration synthesis, again, because a release of water molecule happens, or a reaction at a molecular level. This reaction is also known as a condensation reaction, which usually occurs between amino acids. Okay, so as depicted in the figure on your screen, this is the uh, one amino acid and this is the second. And the, the, the two amino acids bond together and they form a peptide bond. Okay, and of course uh, that happens through dehydration synthesis. Okay, during the reaction, one of the amino acids gives a carboxyl group to the reaction and loses a hydroxyl group that includes oxygen and hydrogen and of course that forms a water molecule okay now let us talk about the secondary structure of our protein folding the protein begins to fold up it can have two types of structure in our secondary structure okay that includes the alpha helix a coil shape held by hydrogen bonds in the same direction as the coil. The beta pleated sheet is an S-shaped pattern on the other hand, okay? That also is with hydrogen bonds holding the structure together, okay? You can see how a alpha helix shape is. It is helical in shape. And beta pleated sheet or the beta sheet secondary structure, okay? So, the secondary structure is the next level of protein structure. The secondary structure refers to local folded structures that forms within a polypeptide due to interactions between atoms of the backbone. Okay? So, now let's move on to our tertiary structure. 
In our tertiary structure, the protein folded into three precise 3D structure relating to the function. This is held together by a range of non-covalent interactions between side groups, including ionic interactions, disulfide bridges, hydrophobic interactions, van der Waal forces, and hydrogen bonds. So, our pleated sheet and our alpha helix forms our tertiary protein structures and it occurs when certain attractions are present between alpha helices and pleated sheets okay that is how a tertiary structure look like okay so the tertiary structure refers to the folding of the different segments of helices the sheets turns and the remainder of the protein into the native three-dimensional structure so it is like a 3d structure now, let's move on to our quaternary structure. So, what is a quaternary structure? Okay? In our quaternary structure, there is this interaction of two or more folded polypeptides. Okay? From our tertiary um, 3D structure, our quaternary structure arises okay many proteins require the assembly of several polypeptide subunits before they become active if the final protein is made up of two subunits the protein is said to be a dimer okay so our quaternary structure is some proteins are made up of more than one amino acid chain giving them a quaternary structure of course the multi-chain proteins on your screen are held together with the same forces as the tertiary structure okay this one okay imagine those are different tertiary structure okay those are individual protein chains from our tertiary structure okay that includes hydrophobic, hydrophilic, or positive and negative and system interactions, okay? So, to sum up the four structures of protein folding, okay? Primary structure is a specific order of amino acids in a protein polypeptide chain. There are 20 different types of amino acids that can be incorporated into a protein chain each with unique attributes okay and of course again as i said kanina that includes hydrophobic hydrophilic positive or negative and 16 interactions okay this is the chains i was talking about okay usually they are composing of 20 different types of amino acid okay so, our secondary structure naman are the alpha helices again, diba? And the beta pleated sheets kanina, okay? That compose of our secondary, which is present in a folded protein structure, okay? This is how they look like, okay? It's either alpha helix or beta sheets, okay? So, our tertiary structure naman is the final shape of an entire amino acid chain okay from our beta sheets or our alpha helix they form a okay a 3d structure again okay that is our final shape of the of an entire amino acid chain this shape is directly related to the function of the protein and our quaternary Structure exists when more than one amino acid chains comes together to form a protein complex. Okay? That is two. As I said kanina, di ba? They are formed from tertiary structure. Okay? So, that is our protein folding. So, okay. This is the primary protein structure or a sequence of a chain of amino acid. And our, sir, our secondary protein structure are the local folding of the polypeptide chain into helices or sheets. And of course, our tertiary protein structure is three-dimensional folding pattern of a protein due to side chain interactions and 
quaternary protein consisting of more than one amino acid chain. Okay? Now, let us talk about membrane proteins. Okay? The plasma membrane contains molecules diba, other than phospholipids. Okay? Primary other than lipids and proteins. The green molecules in the figure I am showing you is an example of the lipid cholesterol okay molecules of cholesterol help the plasma membrane keeps its shape many of the proteins in the plasma membrane assist other substances in crossing the membrane okay so let us again have a brief discussion about plasma membranes okay our plasma membranes contain certain types of proteins a membrane protein is a protein molecule that is attached to or associated with the membrane of a cell or an organelle. Membrane proteins can be put into two groups based on how the protein is associated with the membrane. Okay, That includes integral membrane proteins and peripheral membrane proteins. Okay, Let us talk about our integral membrane proteins. Integral membrane proteins are permanently embedded within the plasma membrane and they have a range of important functions. Such functions include channeling or transporting molecules across the membrane. Other integral proteins act as a cell receptor. Integral membrane proteins can be classified according to their relationship with the bilayer. Okay, imagine this image on your screen okay our plasma membrane includes three different layers that includes the epi the e stands for the extracellular space and the p is the plasma membrane itself okay and our i is the intracellular space okay Transmembrane proteins naman, on the other hand, span the entire plasma membrane. Transmembrane proteins are found in all types of biological membranes. There are two primary types that includes our integral polytopic proteins and integral monotopic proteins. Okay, Integral polytopic proteins are also known as transmembrane proteins proteins which can span across the membrane at least once this integral membrane proteins may have different transmembrane topology which refers to orientations okay our orientations refers of course to our locations of our nitrogen and our c or carbon termini of membrane spanning segments with respect to the inner or outer sides of the biological membrane occupied by the protein. So this is our integral polytopic proteins. The first three types are common forms in integral membrane proteins, such as transmembrane alpha helix protein, transmembrane alpha helical protein, and transmembrane beta sheet protein. Okay, so in the photo. The membrane is presented in yellow, and you can see a single transmembrane alpha helix. Okay, this one. Okay, you can see a single transmembrane alpha helix that is a bitopic membrane protein, which is labeled as number one. Okay, and a polytopic transmembrane alpha helical protein that is labeled as number two. And of course, our polytopic transmembrane beta sheet protein that is labeled as our number 3, okay? While our integral monotopic proteins are permanently naman attached to membrane from only one side, okay? As you can see in the photo, it is just attached on one side. There are no monotopic proteins on this side. Okay? They do not span the whole way across. Okay? 
Okay, there are four types naman of interaction between integral monotopic membrane protein and cell membranes, okay? Those are this, okay? Those are these four here, okay? The number four, five, six, and seven, okay? Our number four is an amphiphatic alpha helix parallel, this one. And our number five is a hydrophobic loop, okay? It forms a loop here. And our number six is by a covalently bound membrane lipid. And our number seven is a electrostatic or ionic interaction with membrane lipids. This one, okay? It is interacted in the membrane lipids, okay? Integral membrane proteins can be separated from the biological membranes only using detergents, nonpolar solvents, or sometimes denaturing agents. Peripheral proteins dissociate following treatment with a polar reagent such as a solution with an elevated pH or high salt concentrations. So, these four types of interactions includes that number four. That is interaction by amphiphatic, okay? Alpha, of amphiphatic alpha helix, okay? When we say amphiphatic, what do we mean, okay? Amphiphatic is a molecule or especially a protein that is having both hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts, okay? Now, our second is the peripheral membrane proteins. Okay, these are the proteins that are only temporarily associated with the membrane. Okay, they are not permanently there. Okay, they can be easily removed, which allows them to be involved in cell signaling. Peripheral proteins can also be attached to integral membrane proteins, or they can stick into a small portion of the lipid bilayer by themselves. Peripheral membrane proteins are often associated with ion channels and transmembrane receptors. Most peripheral membrane proteins are hydrophilic. Okay, they are attached to the surface of the bimolecular lipid layer, probably by electrostatic interactions, whereas integral proteins are integrated into the lipid bilayer. Okay? Now, what is a polypeptide backbone? The backbone atoms of a polypeptide are all of the protein's atoms except for the side chains. The backbone consists of the atoms common to every amino acid, the nitrogen, alpha carbon, and the carboxyl carbon. Okay? Okay, in a peptide bond, the amino acids in polypeptides are held together by peptide bonds. Okay? Add the peptide is formed by a reaction between the alpha carboxyl and alpha amino groups of two amino acids. The peptide bond is not ionizable, but it can form hydrogen bonds. Therefore, peptides and proteins tend to be water-soluble. The disulfide bond can be formed between two cysteines in the same polypeptide or interchain or in different polypeptides Interchain, the reaction takes place in the endoplasmic reticulum, where secreted proteins and membrane proteins are processed. Okay, let us talk about the angles or the torsion angles. Okay, there is two torsion angles in the polypeptide chain, also called Ramanchandran angles. After the Indian, Physicists who work on modeling the interactions in polypeptide change, Ramachandran, okay? Describe the rotations of polypeptide backbone around the bonds between nitrogen to carbon alpha, that is called a phi, okay? And in carbon alpha to carbon called psi, okay? This is uh, what I was talking about, okay? That is the angle of rotation in our chains, okay? And, of course, torsion angles, okay? Here, 
as you can see okay, let's erase it first okay so the image on your screen shows a fragment of a polypeptide chain that shows us the torsion angles phi and psi as rounded arrows okay the angle also called dihedral angle is defined by three consecutive bonds involving four atoms okay the angle describes the rotation of the chain around the middle band and in proteins the two torsion angles this psi and phi okay they are also called ramachandran angles as we have mentioned okay in proteins the two torsion angles are described or is describing the rotation okay around here and here that is our nitrogen to carbon alpha bonds and carbon alpha carbon and carbon bonds respectively okay Okay, the standard IUPAC or IUPAC definition of a dihedral angle is illustrated in the figure below. Okay, our A, B, C, and D illustrate the position of the four atoms used to define the dihedral angle. Okay, the rotation takes place around the central B here this one okay the central b to c bond this one okay the view on the right on the other hand is along the bc bond okay with atom a placed okay at 12 o'clock the rotation around the b c bond is described by the abd angle okay this is the abd angle okay okay the range of the phi and psi ramachandran angles accessible to a polypeptide chain defines the flexibility of the backbone and its ability to adapt a certain fold the third possible torsion angle with the protein backbone is called the omega that describes the rotation at the peptide bonds and is mostly flat and fixed to around 180 degrees. This is due to the partial double bond character of the peptide bond, which restricts rotation around the carbon to nitrogen bond, placing two consecutive alpha carbons and our carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen between them on one plane okay the two most common protein secondary structures again is our alpha helix our alpha helix is a rod like structure whose intersection is formed by a tightly coiled main chain with its side chains extending outward in a helical array the alpha helix structure takes advantage of the hydrogen bond between carbon oxygen and nitrogen hydrogen groups of the main chain to stabilize okay while our beta sheets is more spacious type of secondary structure formed from beta strands strands consist of the protein backbone zigzagging typically for four to ten residues single beta strands are not energetically favorable okay Remember that single beta strands are not energetically favorable. Okay, beta sheets are formed when several beta strands self assemble and are stabilized by interstrand hydrogen bonding, leading to the formation of extended amphiphatic sheets in which hydrophobic side chains point in one direction and polar side chains in the other. Okay, that concludes our discussion for today okay for questions please raise them on our platform in our themes and let us entertain them in a way that everybody can participate okay and everybody can be informed okay remember to leave your names 
in the comment section please only comment your name on the pinned comment on our comment section okay names outside the pinned comment will not be included okay and of course our time is just running until 11 so comments beyond 11 o'clock a.m is not included in our attendance monitoring okay so use our time wisely if you have questions or there are parts that are unclear to you please use our spare time to do research for further understanding of our topic for today okay thank you and good day bye guys